top ring on, just locks the lever. When I put them together I set them to this height so it's just sticking out the bottom but of course if you undo your lock nuts here and take out your set screws then you can adjust your height, ride height up or down as much as you want to wherever you want it. So this bottom adjustment is for your ride height and this top adjustment will be for your spring weight height. So these are your grub screws. So you want to spin the tube to make sure you get right in the center of this machined groove there. But not tight enough to strip out the thread. Your brake line bracket goes on there before you put your lock nuts on. then again done up tight enough to hold them but not tight enough to pull the grub screw out of this aluminium extrusion okay so after you've done all that up so next after you've set your ride height you need to bring this lock ring down and with the provided spanner pull it up like to give it a good hit to make sure it's real nice and tight. So next after this is I'm going to flip it upside down, install the bottom cone with a bit of Loctite and this is where your shock sits on, this little groove here. Build up of the plating. This needs to be done up pretty well, as tight as you can. All right, so that's firmly done up. Flip it back over. So this is your bottom spring platform. You use this to wind your spring up and down. And then this is underneath it for when you've set that, you then lock it in and it can't move anywhere. It's important that this bottom one has the lip facing the other lip so that there is actually a gap in between them and it's not squished up against it. So that one goes on first. bottom so that your spring can go on and then after that we raise it up. Next to go in is the shock. These are brand new, straight out of the box. It's very important not to damage this up here. This is to set your um, shock tension. We usually have it on number two but you can adjust it to whatever you want. One to three to four. So this is your land nut, comes with the shock. This will be on top of the shock and holding it down into this tube and holding it secure so it doesn't move at all. So you want to put Loctite on it before you put it on. Down there, don't scratch your shock as you go down. Do that up. You're going to want to do this pretty much as tight as you can to all right there you go so next to go on it's your bump stop critical to have this you don't want this top cone smashing into that so 
So that, let's put it on halfway down. Ah, spring. Next is your spring. So this is our spring. We have the same dimensions on all our springs, front and rear. The only thing that changes is the poundage. So we custom choose the poundage for each car, depending on what you have, what motor you have, even if you've got the battery in the boot or the front, it all makes a difference. So it all needs to be told to us. Or if you're not happy with it, you can change it yourself. We can send you some lighter or heavier springs. This is 325 pound spring, this car for an XY, so just with a small block, 325 is the right, right height. Alright, so the most important part of installing the spring on the strut is actually making sure you put it the right way up. Not many people know that there is actually a little tang that hangs out the end of the spring here. It'll only be on the bottom end of it. So the other side will be flush, there's no tang. If that ends up, if that tang ends up at the top, it will interfere with the bearing that sits on top of it. And when it spins, it'll be making horrible noises and won't be turning properly. So you want to make sure this little tang sticking out is going down. It'll sit on this perch, kind of indent into this and hold it. So the spring is locked in with that. So you want the tang at the bottom to lock the spring in so it doesn't move, but the bearing on top actually moves. This is our top cone, which sits on top of the spring. And you need a thrust bearing with a couple of thrust plates installed. And of course grease, because it is a bearing. So you put a thrust plate on there. With some good quality grease. Have your bearing on top of that, some more grease, and next thrust plate. Now that's ready to sit on top. So once they're installed, you want to put that on top of your spring, and then you want to put some pressure on it and make sure that spins without catching the spring and spinning the spring. So if you've got the spring upside down, it will and it'll end up dragging it around. That's not good. Next thing to do is install this spherical bushing in the top, pl top plate, which mounts the top of the strut. It gets pushed in from the bottom, and then a circlip will retain it. So just put it in the press. Just use a socket that's perfect size. Make sure it's centered so it does not kink to the side. Press down, all the way. Alright, there you go. Make sure it's pressed in all the way. So now you're ready to put the circlip in, which retains this spherical bush. You want to make sure that it's fully seated in the circlip groove. So next, to install this, the right way up, which is this, on top of your cone. So after that's on, you get this top nut, which secures it down, locates on the shock, and is a nice snug fit through that spherical bush. So to tighten this up, you don't want to overdo it excessively. Just want a quick few bangs with the rattle gun. Make sure it's very tight, but you don't want to spin the shock around too much by doing that up. So to be able to lock this nut in and to not damage that thread, between the grub screw and the thread, we use this little nylon ball that you just pull off the end of a mat pin. And just grab the ball, pull it off, and you want to install it in the hole. It's a little grub screw that just tightens up on that nylon ball yep, okay. and it'll squish it into the thread and lock this top nut in so it can't come undone. Oops. 
the final thing to do is to wind this up. Now once installed in the car and you have all your weight of your engine and everything in, you can wind this up, it will lift the car up a little and it can also dampen the spring, make it stronger. Once that's done and you're happy with how it is, wind up the bottom spring with the provided spanners. Do that up nice and tight and lock it in so it can't move. 